This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours and holding. And we are standing by to have live TV of the crew and their suiting uh, as they make preparations for uh, launch this evening. Uh, at this time, everything continues to go uh, back on schedule. We were a little late in getting our cryogenics loaded into the external tank due to some software problems in the firing room, but that's been resolved and tanking began uh, about an hour late, but it has also uh, just now completed. Also at the pad are the closeout teams for the uh, astronauts. They'll be uh, configuring the cockpit switches and making sure that everything is ready for the crew to, e to ingress the vehicle. Crew, the seven members of our flight team are uh, in their crew quarters, uh, making last-minute preparations, uh, being suited for this mission. Uh, Jim Weatherby is is uh, being uh, attended to. He has his uh, helmet on. He, of course, is uh, preparing for his fourth having served as pilot of Mission STS-32 and commander of Mission STS-52 and 63. Uh, that was the first special mission to rendezvous with the Russian space station. And his pilot is uh, Mike uh, Bloomfield, and he is preparing for his first shuttle mission. He is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy, and has a master's of science degree in engineering management. He was assigned to NASA as an astronaut candidate in 1995. A mission specialist Wendy Lawrence, uh, the only female aboard this flight, making her second trip into space aboard the shuttle spacesuit. She was uh, deemed too small and had to be had to settle for uh, the round trip. And as we move across the room, other astronauts of course are helping the suit work together. As looking at uh, another one of our mission specialists, this uh, looks like uh, Scott Parazinski. Uh, he too was uh, at one point considered to uh, uh, be a member of the Mir team, but uh, he has since uh, now been assigned to this flight as a member of the uh, flight crew to make the round trip. Uh, the the member of the team who will be going up and staying on Mir is uh, Mission Specialist Dave Wolf, and this will be his second trip on the shuttle. Uh, Vladimir Titov also is a uh, member of this uh, crew. He will be uh, making his uh, second flight on the shuttle, but this is his fifth flight overall. Uh, he became a cosmonaut in, back in 1976 and served as commander of the Soyuz T-8 and T-10. Uh, he first flew on the shuttle in on mission STS-63 in February of 1995 uh, with his current commander, Jim Weatherby, of this mission. And it's hard to tell who these uh, astronauts are with their helmets on, but that looked like it was uh, Jean-Luc Chrétien, a uh, member of our uh, flight crew, uh, actually a, uh, he is a chief of the French uh, astronaut office. Witnessing the crew departure are a number of KSC employees who have uh, uh, finished up their day and have decided to stick around for a couple hours to uh, take some photographs of the seven members of the STS-86 crew being led by uh, Jim Weatherby, uh, followed by pilot Michael Bloomfield, uh, mission specialist Vladimir Titov, Scott Perezinski, Jean-Luc Christian, Wendy Lawrence, and David Wolf. remain in orbit over 11 years I think is a testimony to how well the Russians understand what it takes to operate in orbit and we need to be very mindful of that. It looks like the pad has been cleared of, of all uh, inappropriate um, personnel as well as uh, the uh, personnel who are on the pad have been
The shuttle launch control at T minus one hour, two minutes, and counting. And this is a, a unique view of our vehicle on pad 39A with the lights of pad 39B uh, behind it. Uh, pad 39B is currently undergoing a number of uh, renovations and modifications and uh, will be used uh, in the next several months. From his standpoint, uh, several thousand feet uh, over the pad, that everything continues to look good from a weather standpoint. The and Based on that, this is shuttle launch control at T minus 20 minutes and holding with about 20 seconds remaining in our hold. As we come out of the hold, Atlantis is on board computers. We'll transition into the terminal phase of the countdown configuration. Inside Atlantis's payload bay is the pressurized space hab double module, which was is being used to carry more than 6,000 pounds of science equipment and experiments into orbit. Also, food, clothing, batteries, and water is being transferred from Atlantis to the Mir, and that equipment is being carried up in the space hab. And we are T-minus 19 minutes and counting. orbiter access arm is being retracted away. Uh, this is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle. And it can be returned to position within seconds if need be. Zaragoza has gone to a forecast broken deck. Your new tau site will be Maroon. That's site number three. Nominal aim point, nominal speed break. The altimeter there is two niner, niner, niner. Winds are zero five zero at four. And we are receiving the signal from Mission Control in Houston to start the orbiter's flight recorders. These recorders collect measurements of shuttle system performance during flight. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Copy that. And Atlantis OTC, close and launch your visors. Initiate O2 flow. Have a good trip. One voyage, Josh Leva, and give our best to the Mir crew. And everything continues to look good, and we are cleared for launch tonight. Uh, that's done work. No problems being reported from the vehicle or the crew. T minus two minutes and counting. TLS is go for ET LHT pressurization. A go for auto sequence start. Atlantis onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine. 5, 4, 3, 
two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis, extending America's presence in space while opening new chapters in exploration. Houston now control. Houston now control and roll. Roll program initiated. Place Atlantis on its heads down track over the Atlantic. Engine's throttling down now. Three engines at 67. Atlantis moving at 1,000 miles per hour now. Altitude 8.8 .8 miles, downrange 5.8 miles. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up and we'll ignore the fuel cell delta V also. Three engines back at 104%. Now Atlantis moving at 1,600 miles per hour. Atlantis, that is a deucer. Copy and concur. Three good fuel, fuel cells, three good APUs, three engines running at 104%. Atlantis now moving at over 2,000 miles per hour, 18.4 miles in altitude, downrange 16 miles. About 15 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. Atlantis moving at 2,800 miles per hour. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance converging. Performance nominal. Confirm main engine cutoff. Atlantis. Nominal Miko, Ohms 1 not required. Okay, Ohms 1 not required. ET separation confirmed. Good morning, Atlantis. It's time to do that delicate dance in the dark and dock with Mir. All right, your boss. Okay. I look in better time. place for me. <laughs> that goes to the docking time, the one they gave us, right? Yes. Thank you. Trying to correct the
2,292. This is first. Like when you get an egg, egg, egg. When you get an attitude. Okay. It looks like we're in attitude oh, now. Yeah. I'm showing four degrees out. Four degrees? Yeah. I show four degrees on our pup here as well. Still in auto? Yes. And I went back to A. Did you want to be in B? That doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, that's... We're in attitude, right? Let's, let me look here. Point two. Let's just fly point two the rest of the way in. Okay. And try and stay on the fast side of point two. In other words, let it bleed down to point two and then pump it up to like point two four and let it bleed down to point two. And then when we get in closer, like 170 feet or so, then we can start playing the game yeah, of point one seven to point two. Okay. And we've got and your docking port and docking. Port. Your docking port to docking port. Yeah, that's pretty. One five. One five. One point nine. Say again. I can start now. Uh, to point two until we get down to uh, one hundred and ten feet, Jim. And then we would stop at thirty. Yes. No, right now, if you didn't do any more pulses, you would stop in 30 feet. But if you no, keep in it 30 feet, that's the iron. Uh, after that, we're going to be able to do it, we're going to be able to do it, and then we're going to be able to do it. What OPL is doing in the zone, two of our ships on the ground, at 0025, 0038. That's when the window opens. That's that's two minutes into it. Right. That is right. two minutes into Correct. it. So it opens. Right. Right. One forty forty nine. Bump it up, Jim. Now we're going to do the uh, the DAP closure here. Can I help you stay steady? Just don't touch me. Yeah, you can hold me a little bit. There we go. Oh, nice. Oh, now all you can see is the ring. This is neat. Okay, 75 feet, closing 0.08. Top it up. Good. Yes. 0.75. Right. What do you think? Flood lights off. Leave the lights the way they are. Okay, the window opened a minute from uh, 15 seconds ago, Jim. Okay. Still happy with the range? I mean the uh, flyout, right? Flyout looks good. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you again. Roll Stays flying again. You're happy with uh, like. Yeah, Bill, you should be getting an image now. Oh, we got it, Mike. And when this one's done, I have another one of the centerline camera. Well, we're sure not going to turn that offer down.
Waiting for damping to come on. Yeah, it's uh, 1 minute 15 seconds. Hold on. Uh, that was just great. Awesome. Great job. Yeah. That was huge. It was uh, three and a half in, uh, four and a half in uh, pitch. Yeah. 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 It's a lot easier to see. Maybe our lighting conditions have been different than the other crews in the past. Yeah. Is that better time from here? The last one? Yeah. I think it's a better time from here. The last one. The last one. Okay. Uh, what are we looking on uh, the base there now, Jean-Lou? About 20. At 7%, we should see uh, the ready to hook light. Yeah, we're at 16. Atlantis Mayor Houston, we're five minutes to hand over to Tedris East. Uh, we expect to be in blockage uh, for the East Pass, and air to ground will be unreliable up until we come uh, AOS Tedris West. Uh, we have other presents for you too. Houston, uh, you cannot believe the number of times that several of us on board said unbelievable on our way up here, either with the scene, the views, uh, the procedures we had, that just the fact that we were doing this, none of us can, can still believe it. And I just had a shock when I looked out the window over here and saw Atlantis. It took us a while to get to the Mir core module here, uh, and I didn't realize how far away Atlantis was. Uh, We'd like to thank all of the people down on the earth who, it, it's a tremendous amount of teamwork required to put something like this together. And we had discussions all the way up when we were in uh, crew quarters and quarantine just before coming up regarding the procedures and what do we do uh, if we have failures and, and just 
both sides of the ocean worked on this flight uh, for a long time, and we want to thank everybody who worked on it. Uh, we think this is a great crew, the 10 of us. There was a lot of discussion about the risk. We are here to tell you, all 10 of us, that we think the benefit far outweighs the risk, and that's why we're here, and uh, we're really enjoying it. And this is a great ship. I can't believe it. I saw it two years ago from 30 feet, which is not very far away, but it turns out it was really far away compared to uh, the last 30 feet and then coming all the way in to the Mir base block. Сегодня Атлантис э, в очередной раз подошел к станции Мир, выполнил экипаж выполнил великолепную стыковку, и э, сегодня начинается, вернее продолжается э, программа Мир НАСА, которая уже идет несколько лет, и мы очень рады, что э, шаг за шагом и каждый этот шаг очень твердый и уверенный который ведет, каждый шаг ведет к выполнению, к новым выполнениям задач, которые ставятся экипажем в Москве и в Хьюстоне. Я хотел бы поздравить, во-первых, всех специалистов, которые готовили эти программы на земле, и поздравить экипаж, который пришел сегодня на станцию «Мир». И мы уверены, и мы с большим энтузиазмом будем выполнять всю программу, которая будет запланирована нашим экипажем при совместной деятельности общего комплекса. They're already hot, these, these, um, and this, this is really good stuff. This is the best stuff you get. Wendy, He's now. I, I yes, for us, you. This is space hair the wrong way, so we'll go this way.
Now let's head up to Mirror. This is the docking module here. Coming up into the Cristal module. Incredible view down. It's planet Earth. Atlantis Mir Houston, good morning, and it's time for Scott and, and Veloja to go outside and have a good look at that wonderful world themselves. What a wonderful world indeed, Chris. Yes, thank you very much.
So now, right. Okay, Wendy, we'll take a look at that. Starboard Bay 6, right, Mike? I 
did, and other sites now. I mean picture. This is Mission Control Houston. Again, this uh, sequential still video being provided through the S-band communication system on Atlanta showing uh, astronauts Scott Parazinski and Vladimir Titov hauling up to and now affixing the 121-pound uh, solar array cap to the side of the docking module. How about if I come up to the forward bulkhead? That'll work better. Okay. Take your time. Okay. You guys are out four and a half hours right now. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, that'd be great. Hello, Jeff. I'll take it. 
I would like to open it and thank Commander Anatoly Soloviev uh, and Board Engineer Pavel Vinogradov for inviting us, us into their home for the last several days. They have been very gracious. They are a tremendous team. They work well together. They have taught us a lot, and we thank them for being so gracious. It requires an awful lot of teamwork to pull one of these missions together. Uh, to start with, of course, the rendezvous is not just the pilots or the crews, but all the folks on the ground. Uh, and, the, and the tracking stations all around the world to get the precise navigation required. Uh, by the way, I feel very confident that had the mirror lost uh, attitude control, we still would have been able to dock with uh, the teamwork that we have and that we've uh, developed over the last several years. somehow. Да счастливо, мужички! Good undocking morning to you, Atlantis Mirror. Thanks for the is that ELT. Atlantis Mirror, Houston. Um, from the time you give a go to the Mirror crew to uh, put the pressure pulse inside the spectrum module, uh, it, it takes about a minute and a half for that pressure to ramp up, so it may be uh, that period of time before you would be able to see anything. Yeah. 
Да, скорость на разделение, скорость на разделение 3 сантиметра. Twenty feet. Anything one degree tail down. Okay. Correct. So you only have to hit his Twenty nine feet. Point three. Thirty feet. See it. Ten meters. Okay, so normal. I'm sure you're probably a big pulse away from stopping. It's all damaged. All time I will fall damaged now. Okay. Enough. I know, I've never. Maybe a little too much. Okay. Isn't that just smart? I'm getting it, Jim. Don't worry. This is beautiful. Now do it for George, such as.
air data probes on Atlantis have now been deployed. Long range cameras now picking up view of Atlantis as it continues to make its approach towards the Kennedy Space Center. Is that going in? Guidance is, or the approach and land thing on the HFI. Approach and land on scaling. Okay, there's a runway in sight. Okay. I'm not going to call it though. And I have two uh, red, white ones and two red ones, Wex. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, if it's good. I'm decluttering. So am I. Show you a little bit right. There you go. Atlantis, uh, Houston. For Bloomer, uh, did you see uh, any anomalies during your valve test? Uh, negative, Scooter. They all looked perfect. Good job, Bloomer. Okay, Devotee, 185. So you're going down at one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, two, and you're a little bit right at the center line. Here comes the chute. 